Yeah, I'm Andrew Jessup, Chairman of Bradland Commissioners. Uh, so, Mr Jessup, we've been hearing today about the numerous problems that we had with the Roundhouse, um, which obviously was delayed and has led to uh, an issue of the budget as well. But yes, the big point really at this stage is that access problems and this ongoing sort of war of words with the DHSC, which is spilled into legal letters. And where are we at to with all this? Well, obviously, we've built this fantastic facility, which uh, we've been, you know, led to believe by uh, the government is the type of facility that's needed to attract new residents or retain existing residents in the island. So, so yes, you know, we've we've um, it's been twenty years in in gestation. You know, it's been um, six plus years in in planning. Uh, it's been three four years in in building. We're now ready to open. Um, yet the DHSC that previously fully supported the project and said that access could be through the hospital estate roads have now said that um, they want to prevent us from using the roads um, to the site, which means at the moment we're in a difficult situation that we've been advised not to issue leases to people. And without leases, that means it's going to affect the income. Now there's, there's... The letter that we've seen today, it says 28 days to going to block it. Can you see a situation where they do turn up with diggers and somehow block the site of how they try and intend to do it? Well, as I say, the uh, minister in a meeting with us before Christmas threatened to put planters across the entrance to our um, car park. How that would actually improve the situation on the, the hospital site, because if they can't use the 70, 80 parking spaces here, um, our um, patrons will look for somewhere else to park. And this isn't just affecting the commissioners, this is affecting, um, well, first of all, the businesses who are, they were prepared to enter into leases, they're now at a sort of semi sort of stage where they haven't got any guarantees either about what's going to happen. What um, communications do you have from them? Well, our centre manager, um, Cassie's been trying to liaise with them on a regular basis. We've I, well, I had a, uh, a meeting and video conference with um, the tenants a few weeks ago to try and explain to them the situation and what we were trying to do to, to alleviate the problems. Um, we, we'll obviously continue those discussions with them. Uh, my worry is that uh, further delays may mean that we might lose more potential tenants and that obviously then ex exasperates the problem that we're already facing in terms of uh, a near on £10 million pound project, um, which was projected to, to have come on stream at the beginning of January, um, that we could be months away from getting the full income that we were projecting. One of the, the, the big issues that has arisen on for yourselves is that while your rates are still lower than, as you pointed out, several of your especially larger neighbours, they have shot up significantly, um, in part because of delays with the roundhouse. Uh, can you see why residents are annoyed about that situation? Well, uh, we're all annoyed. Um, and it's understandable that, uh, you know, people who are already facing increases in their um, charges that, that are now also looking at an increase in their rates. Um, fortunately, as, as I've pointed out, the uh, um, increase, although it sounds uh, a lot, only for the average rate, uh, domestic rate payer, I think it adds about £1.50 a week to their rates bill. Um, I'm not trying to dismiss that as, as, as you know, as trivial or insignificant. I, I appreciate it is an increase that is, is unwelcome. However, you know, we, we feel that uh, once we've overcome our, our difficulties, that we will have a facility that uh, people in the future will say, you know, um, it was what we... Uh, always envisaged um, the facility would be like and, and it's been a great benefit to the parish and the island in general uh, in the years to come. It is, as you said earlier, it's, it's the Isle of Man, if it can, it will go wrong. Um, but we've also heard that you've got sports halls block books, you've got businesses waiting to take over. Are you confident that in a year, two years down the line, this will be an unfortunate situation which led to, but things will improve? Yeah, I'm sure it will get forgotten um, in, in years to come. As I say, if, if, if it's anything to go by in terms of the interest and, and you know, I think, I think we're going to be managing, you know, problems of, of its success rather than 
problems that we're facing at the moment. I think, you know, it is a temporary blip, but obviously it is a difficult one and it's, it's effectively going to affect quite a few people um, in terms of the impact on the rates for, for possibly the, this year and, and next. Um, ironically though, um, you know, we, we were told by the, in, uh, Minister Hooper a, in a meeting before Christmas that uh, you know, whereas he has to go to tr um, Tinwald to raise money, all we have to do is put our rates up. Ironically, the biggest rate payer in Braddon is the DHSC, so the more he costs us, the more it will rebound and cost the DHSC in the long run. So I think you know, it would be sensible for everybody to sit down and try and find a way out of this situation before it escalates. Mr Jessup, thank you.